Hello friends, uh, Brad here again. I've received so many questions about our video on all the extra grunt junk that I carry. I got questions about, you know, how do you pack all those things into your rig and truck? And uh, you didn't talk about this or that or the other. So I'm gonna quickly run down some of those comments and uh, show you exactly what we have going on here. We have just set up in this campground uh, you can see that side doors open over there. That's where I keep all my cleaning stuff and I'll show you that up close. Up here at the front is where I don't store anything. It's where my battery and inverter and all those things are. That whole storage side on that side of the rig is just nothing but camping blankets and sleeping bags really and a few rolled up posters and a tube. Everything that I showed you the other day fits in the back of the truck and it's not overly packed. It all fits there and there's a bunch of stuff that I did not cover and that's what I aim to do right now. So uh, let's go check out these things first. So in this Again, we have the twin beds, so there's storage on each outside, kind of under the bed, half of the bed, like out half of the bed is here, the end half of the bed's inside you get to. So I have lubrication, cleaning stuff. Um, my Level Mate Pro is in here. Some water things are in here, but not much, like the, the, the garden hose nozzle. I keep my 50 to... 15 amp or 20 amp plug here and I keep my 30 amp this is a 30 amp spot so we're plugged in 30 amp but my 30 amp uh, adapter is right there my power cords here the power cord is the only thing I have removed from the back of the truck period well that box down there you see is a blue eddy um, I made a video on this thing a few weeks back if you're ever interested in a blue eddy if you do boondocking quite a bit it's something I highly recommend uh, Blue 80 sent that to me to do a review on. I did not pay for it, but it's a wonderful, wonderful addition. And I'm, I'm so thankful we have it because all the boondocking we tend to do, if it's cloudy day after day after day, and I don't get much sun to repower the rig in, we just use that to charge our phones and uh, iPads and things like that at night or during the day. And then when we drive around, we plug it into the cigarette lighter and it re recharges itself as we drive. We drove two hours, three hours this morning, and it was almost dead when I plugged it into the truck. So it's got about 50% back. So I just plugged it into this box out here to finish recharging itself. But that's the only, that, those are the only two things I have removed from the truck since we arrived here. And I'll show you the back of the truck momentarily. But anyway, cleaning bucket, cleaning rags are kind of up in this area so they don't get touched by things as I get in and out of here. Uh, silicone spray, lithium grease, additives for my truck. Uh, I use this Amsoil all-in-one. And I'll have a link to Amzol. We just recently partnered with Amzol. I'll have a link for their all of their things that you might need for your rig or for your tow vehicle. Uh, I'll have a web page for that coming out very, very soon. That's what's in here. And if you don't know, these little shiny locks came from Air Gear. We're also partnered with Air Gear, uh, ambassadors for Air Gear, really. Uh, and everything, that, all the stuff they have, we really, really love. So um, that's it for right here. Back here in the back, I have my black hose and I have my blue hose. Both are zero G hoses. My collapsible cones are here. This is a spare. A spare one of these. I, I've never hooked this thing up. It's just a spare but that stays back here. My awning rod, my power jack rod, or not my power jack but my stabilizing jack rod. And then we have our leveling blocks. They're also back here in this bumper. And that's that's the things that are back here. So Kamek blankets, Kamek sleeping bags, and a yoga mat, and my sword from my Marine Corps career, and a poster, a tube with some posters in it. So that's really all that's in this compartment. We keep these in here because you shouldn't leave sleeping bags compressed all the time or blankets compressed all the time because it they don't they lose their ability to keep warm. So we keep them in here so they can expand. Up here in the front compartment is my inverter and big battery. I do have my four-way lug wrench and my awning, emergency awning retract device here. I don't store things in this compartment because I don't want stuff flopping around and running into my electrical connections or shorting things out. So uh, that's why I have nothing up here. I do keep my, so this is my light up sign that'll hang right here for um, if we're at a rally or something and it's too windy to hang this thing up or I don't want to hang this thing up, I can just hang this up. It's solar powered. It lights up at night. It's a really nice little addition. 
and these little three inch red numbers I bought on Amazon. Um, anything I've showcased in this, I'll, I'll have on Amazon too. And I bought the, I bought this piece of plexiglass from the leftovers at a Lowe's somewhere, uh, and I put my big red numbers on it, and I put the string. So when I open this front plexiglass window, I can hang this on those two little hooks right here that the rubber grommet is hooked into. I hang it on the front, or if we have the back hatch open, I can hang it right on the back hatch there on the two little prongs that hold the back hatch closed. Uh, this way, I don't have to put my big red numbers on the on the rig itself. Because this may be our forever rig, but I don't know. And our, what used to be battery box, is now a storage box. So I have my DC to DC charging wire, a cable connector should we ever desire to watch cable TV, and I have a stack of Lego blocks. I think there's 10 in there, and there's just a rag I use for random stuff. The aux blocks that you can see underneath my front nose jack, that also stores in here. All right, here in the truck, front seat's empty. Back seat's empty, because we have to have a, a place to put Scout and Piper. Uh, so Piper sits up here on the seat, and we use this uh, harness here. So a uh, rough wear harness, we, we put her in this, and this is her little seat belt as we travel. So we can hook her into the seat belt harness here. So should we ever be in an accident, she won't go flying. Uh, you see I have a Yeti cooler here that sometimes we put things in, but rarely. The blue, the blue Yeti uh, charging station sits right between in the floor there. And also have a box full of uh, gloves to do sewer stuff. And over on the other side is an ab mat to do setups with. My red Craftsman Mechanics tool set. And another box. And I'm going to cover that other oh, Yeti box. I'm going to take it out and put it on the tailgate so you can all see what's in that. That's, a, that's the thing that I didn't cover mostly. Down here in this little hole between the seat and the cooler is my sunshade for the windshield. And a torque wrench is down there. And then, you know... Random stuff we collect on the way. Poop bags, leashes. We have poop bags and leashes typically on both sides of the, of the truck, so no matter who gets her out. Here in the back of the truck, and I'm going to unlock this so we can all see. So here's my hose holder. It's a Camco, pretty nice, shiny thing. Again, if you've not seen the video on this, there's a, this is the long one, like 15 feet. There's a 10-foot one that's a little bit more manageable by yourself when you're trying to stretch it out. But it does come in handy and it's cool because it matches the airstream. I uh, have my proven lock here for my nose lock, which is really great. My short step ladder and then my long telescoping ladder. I put those on top of all the things in here so they don't bounce around. And I, I have everything covered up with the tarp because even though that retract bed cover is covered up, it still leaks if it rains hard enough. So I'll pull this down. And I'll pull this down, and we'll pull this off so you can see. The, the Tupperware bin that I showed you in the video is up there at the very front. That's all my RV stuff. So the wheel tire covers, water hoses, water connectors, the extra uh, extension cords, all the things that I pulled out of that one box are all up in that one box up at the front and this is a shorter bed truck this is not a long bed this bin and there's another one right in front of it right there those are both camping and uh, tent camping and backpacking gear so we have different size backpacks for whatever we're going to do all of the stuff we use to hike the Appalachian Trail fits in one of those and another one is for all of our uh, heavier weight kind of shorter duration trips but um, it depends on where we are. Cold weather camping, there's another things, but we have two bins, one, two Costco bins that are just dedicated to camping gear. So we have two tents, about four backpacks and some smaller backpacks for trail running and things like that. And um, camp stoves and all that kind of stuff is all in those two bins. And all my RV stuff is up there because I don't need to get it very often. Over here on the side, I have my snap pad blocks. So I use these to level with instead of those yellow blocks most of the time uh, if you're in most of the level spots. I'll need, if I need a half inch, I use one on one side. If I need a full inch, I use two. And then we use the big crescent moon looking deal for uh, anything up to three inches. If I need to go bigger than that, I'll use the big yellow leveling blocks. But these sit right over here. Two of them are under the wheels right now. Um, I have a 
portable solar panel that sits up here on top of these things. We have a roll up green AstroTurf carpet that I put out front. I have this mat right here that goes out depending on where we are. I like the AstroTurf because it's easy to keep wipe, wipe feet off and keep clean. Uh, a bag of wood. Piper's dog bed. All of my workout gear, so kettlebells, weight vest, uh, slam balls, all that stuff's right there. I have an air compressor up there, and we have our solo stove is right there. So that all fits right here in the back of the truck. Everything in here has to do with winter sports, skiing and snowboarding, uh, and snowboarding equipment and ski equipment like jackets and clothes and boots and things like that. So that's all this everything up here. And then these two are our covers for our bicycles. And let me go get that gray bin, and I'll show you what's in that. All right, I do have a drill and an impact gun. And I use this, this fitting to run the stabilizers up and down. I didn't talk about these in the last video. I'm sorry. I had talked about these in other videos, so I assumed it was known. Um, then I have a, a set of drill bits and uh, end tips like for various bolts and nuts and things like that. In addition to my mechanics tool set, I have this for all of the impact gun and drill. And I don't remember if I showed this in the video, but these are a pack of two lights I got. They're super bright, super, super bright. And you can use it to charge your phone. This is a lithium battery. It can recharge, and you can plug your phone in here and charge your phone should you need to. But it stands up. It magnets to things. It's really handy light. I have two of these. And this, this toolbox or this tool bag... Um, so Allen wrenches, uh, my socket for torquing the wheels, and a few other things, just wrenches and pliers and screwdrivers and stuff that I use more regularly than uh, when I'm doing stuff on the inside. I can just grab that little tool bag and run and do what I'm doing. It's really handy. Now, this is a, also a Yeti. I talked about those um, seals, like the different seals for stuff outside that stays in here. This is for that, if you don't know, I put on some clear film on the inside of all of my outside storage doors. So when you put stuff in and out of them, you don't scratch them up. It's a 3M film. This is part of that kit. I have a multimeter here and I can wrap this around a cord and see what I'm coming. I can plug in the diode or plug in the electro electrodes and touch things and know what kind of electricity I'm getting through any kind of device. Yes, I do have a rivet gun, and I have a complete rivet kit in here with every size rivet you could want for the Airstream. And this rivet gun specifically is not from them, but Air Gear has a very nice rivet kit, and it has a wonderful rivet gun that's like more of a squeeze gun than it is two hands together. Uh, but the head articulates so you can get into some really tight spaces should you need to, and it's a wonderful rivet gun set, so I can put links to all that down below. I have a troubleshooting thing I can plug into the port on the truck and troubleshoot any codes that I might get and clear those if necessary. A wire stripper. Here's my other one of those big lights. There's some rivets. I have a step bits so I can drill out certain things if I need to, like putting those thumb screws in your air conditions. I use that to step down. Here's a gun that I use for that. So the receptacles that go up in the roof to screw into, this is what clamps those things down. And those are called rivet nuts, and that squeezes the rivet nut down so it doesn't spin. I have a big staple gun in here. I have some extra drawer, the little latches for the drawer. The Airstream drawers are in here. Uh, all sorts of electrical connections, safety glasses, uh, headlamps, dielectric grease. I got Loctite, the blue and the red. Heat shrink for tubes, small screwdrivers, lubrication for the bicycle, these little rubber dots that go under, underneath your cabinet so when the cabinet slams, it's the little dots that stick all around. Here's another set of, whole set of rivets for everything. Here's all the rivet nuts I could need. Here's a set of terminals, and I have some wrenches and some other, other stuff down in here. As you can see, we're not packed to the gills. None of this is stored in the trailer as we drive. It all goes like you see it. We like we like to be able to be, you know, when we walk into our trailer, we can use it. I know a lot of people drive with things, you know, boxes stuck down the hallway. 
so to speak, or down the center aisle, and we don't do that. Uh, the only thing we do is drop the table down. And I'm going to go inside and show you a few other things that I might have missed on the previous one as well. Uh, a couple more things. I've been asked a ton recently about front-end separation since Mark and Trish put out their video on the issues they've had. I've never experienced front-end separation, um, and I don't use a hitch. This is the hitch that I use. It's a B&W adjustable ball hitch. I don't use a weight distribution hitch, not because I don't think they're necessary or net needed or, or warranted or good. I love them and I think they're fantastic. And on our last trailer, the 30 foot Airstream, I used an equalizer hitch. This truck can tow, I think a 15,000 pound bumper pull trailer. It has a three inch receiver, it's the F350. So that trailer only weighs 60, uh, I think it weighs right now 6240 or something like that is what that trailer weighs as it sits right now with a 50% with a water in it. Uh, so really light, so I can tow double the amount of weight with this with this truck i also have the torque lift central side load stabilizers in my leaf springs i take them in and out as we travel so that helps balance the truck out and and reduce reduce balancing and porpoising and things like that but i don't use a weight distribution hitch i i had an opportunity to get a free equalizer i had an opportunity to get a free blue ox uh when when we got the new trailer but i didn't take either one of them because i didn't want to use it uh, if you have a tow vehicle that is, you know, pushing the limits of what the what you can tow with your with your trailer that you have, by all means get one. And if it makes you feel safer, also by all means get one. I get asked about the Hensley hitch all the time, and they tow fantastically. But so many people get them that don't really need them. Like if you got an F250 or a bigger kind of super duty diesel truck or super duty in general, and you're towing a really light trailer, that Hensley hitch is way way too much. Again, it pulls like a dream. It just kind of goes behind you. There's no pivoting, uh, but hooking up and taking it down is, is excessive work sometimes. And it's a very, very expensive hitch. Not that I don't believe in them. Again, they're fantastic. And if you got money to burn, go for it. It tows like a dream. Uh, but we go off road and bouncing down dirt roads sometimes with our trailer. And I don't, I don't use any hitch. Again, this truck can handle it. I also did not do a lift kit on this current uh, trailer. We had a lift kit on the last one. Um, I had, I think, two and a half feet more behind that rear tire in the last trailer than I do in this t trailer, so we used to drag the bumper quite a bit. I have only been in one spot where I was, I couldn't back up because it was a dip. Uh, I was trying to back into a spot. I, I, I was boondocking or something. I couldn't back into it because of the dip, but we just pulled around and pulled through it. It was fine. No issues. Uh, so no no hitch. I haven't had any weight distribution. I'm sorry. I haven't had any front end separation issues. No buckling, no rivets coming out, no, nothing like that. And again, I believe largely that is due largely to people towing with such a rigid weight distribution hitch. It just keeps it so rigid all the time. There's no give and no take and that causes everything to kind of vibrate so much. One of the reason I believe I've had no issues is because of my Centromatic wheel balancers. They have proven fantastic for lessening the vibrations inside the trailer. Uh, the new um, air, air rod hitch that Mark and Trish put on, that thing is amazing. It's super awesome. And Rick Wright from The Right Life, if you've not seen his re recent review on that, uh, please go watch it. I think Rick did an amazing job of covering the pro pluses and minuses of that uh, hitch in, a, in great detail. So go watch Rick on The, on the Right Life and uh, see his review of the, that air ride hitch. I, again, I think it's fantastic. And I, I was going to buy one until him and I chatted about it. So um, I don't. I still don't want one. In the future, we get a smaller truck or we get a bigger trailer again. I may have a hitch again, but at this present time, I do not. All right, let's go check out what's inside. Inside the trailer, as you see it right now, is almost what it looks like when we travel. Our little baby bottle drying rack here goes in the sink. Any other things that sit up on the counter go in the sink and we travel like that. We don't do anything different up here. All of our cookware and cleaning stuff is here. Drawers stay the way they are. We do put some painter's tape on this cabinet right here because this is a big, pretty heavy drawer. And sometimes, depending on the bump you hit and stuff's twist in here, that, that drawer will pop open. So we do put a little bit of painter's tape. I'm trying to figure out a way to put a latch on it that's different. Uh, refrigerator, I, I've seen people tape their refrigerator doors. If you can pull your refrigerator door open without pulling the handle, like you pull, I made a video about this not long ago. 
you need to add a washer down here. And I encourage you to go back and find that video about refrigerator adjustments. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. We don't, we take some of our pillows, depending on what's up top up here. So if we have our mini bar set up up there, uh, we'll sometimes put pillows up in that top cabinet to just keep things from bouncing around, but not very often. And then our, the Dyson fan that's up there in the bedroom, it lays on that Piper's bed in the floor. And all the stuff that's on the nightstand table up there goes in the floor or in the drawer. But our trailer looks just like this as we travel down the highway. All right, here in the bathroom, we have recently just moved our dehumidifier to the bathroom. It's typically been underneath um, the table, the, the, the kitchen table or the, big, the dining table. But we recently moved it into the bathroom. It sits up on this counter nicely. It doesn't cover too much space. And uh, I put a broom holder, like a command strip a broom holder. And then a few of this stuff just comes and sits on the floor or in the sink. So everything on the counter goes down low. And that's really the only thing we have to worry about. One more quick thing about storage space and where we put things. Our Zip D chairs and Zip D uh, ta table uh, go right here between the wall and the bed. So if you have the 27 foot, you have a little bit of space here. If you have the 25 foot, there'd be no space here. So 27 gives you a little bit more storage plus an extra uh, closet locker here. So I have my storage bins here. Blair's hangs, hangs all her stuff in hers. And then we have our storage lockers up top. Okay, I hope this clarifies uh, some stuff about that last video I made and all the things that we carry. It seems like a lot, but it's really not that much stuff, and we don't have extra things that we don't need. Uh, we see people in campgrounds all the time with stuff scattered all over the place and all underneath their rigs, and that, we don't live like that, and, and we try to be what I call expeditionary. So at any moment, I would like to be at the point where if I need to go in 20 minutes, I'm driving. From the time I say go to the time we're pulling away is 20 minutes at most. So we keep things pretty orderly. We clean. You know, I sweep the rig every day, every, sometimes twice a day, and uh, keep all the things working in an order, orderly fashion as best we can. The only time that 20-minute rule doesn't apply is when I've got all the cleaning stuff scattered about or we've, you know, I'm working on something, got things taken apart, things like that. But for the most part, we stay ready to move at any moment's notice should we need to or want to. Because sometimes I haven't just like my neighbors. I'm ready to move. But uh, thank you to everyone out there who asked a question and commented back and, and, and other things like that. So I'm going to run through. Uh, I'm going to go grab my iPad real quick and, and talk through some of those questions that got post it on that video to help people out and then this one will post as soon as I can edit it. All right again the video has been out for a little over 24 hours now and I'm just going to run through a list of all the comments and I'll try to answer those here but I'll write back on the comments on there too. What length collapsible ladder do you use climbing on the Airstream? I have one that is 15 feet tall. Uh, that collapsible ladder you saw on the back of the truck is 15 feet. So I talked about a rivet gun and a quarter drill. I I've discussed those. Oh chucks. I don't, I used to have X shocks. I like X shocks. I think they're fantastic, but I have these fast way, uh, step on. I don't think you can see them, but I'll show them. I did a video on these two, but fast way, you just put them underneath and step on it down here. Super easy to get in and out. I have one for both sides of the rig. My wife says she'd like to see everything fit in the truck bed and the compartments. Ta-da. You just saw that today. Thanks for commenting. Somebody talked about tire pressure, <laughs> the third rail of Airstream topics. Somebody said it justifies what I do. Uh, their their better half was complaining that all the stuff that they carry, but now that Brad, that better half has seen Brad do it, it's okay to do it. So that made me laugh very much. Thank you for that. Uh, curious if I use a Magic Creeper. It's stored up in one of those boxes. A Magic Creeper, if you don't know, is like a is like a a big mat that slides around. So if I need to climb under the rig for something, I can lay down on that and scoot side to side like a normal Creeper has wheels. But we're typically in spots where there's no. Uh, smooth surface to use a normal creeper and the magic creeper folds up really nice but have the magic creeper really love it it's really nice to get in and out of the rig underneath the rig to do stuff with i also use my camping mats to do that sometimes too somebody talked about blue uh the zero g hoses leaking over time if you recall in that last video and many many videos before if i'm going to leave my water hose hooked up to city water inlet and pressure on it all the time i don't use those zero g hoses they will leak and I've had both those zero-G hoses you see in the back back there for over two years now, and they've been fine. But I only use them for, you know, I wash the rig off, I put water in my fresh water tank, but I don't leave pressure on them for days on the end. Not just a couple hours at most when I'm washing the rig. Uh, 
Uh, another question about rivet gun. Again, the Air Gear rivet gun. Airstream Supply Company also has one, but I like the one from Air Gear better. Uh, where do you carry all those weights? It goes in the back of the truck, no issues. Somebody else, I've had two comments about water softeners. I don't use a water softener. Again, I filter everything going in the fresh water tank or in the city water in it when we do that on occasion. But I also use bleach to clean out my water system. And I just kind of a time, I use bleach or vinegar, one of the two. It depends on where we are. It depends on what we've been exposed to. As I talked about, I test all the water I put in this trailer before I put it in there to know what kind of water I'm getting. And if I've had hard water, hard water, hard water, hard water, hard water many times over and over again, I will vinegar the system to clear out some of that deposit buildup. And then if I've been exposed to any kind of weird other stuff, I put uh, bleach in it. And my kind of schedule for that is this. January and July, I like to use bleach six months apart. March and September, I use vinegar, also six months apart, but they're all separated by three months from each other. So that's kind of our full-time living exposed to who knows what kind of water. But again, I, I test all the water, so I have an idea of like, if I've had too much uh, hard water for a long time, I'll go ahead and run a vinegar cycle through here. And there's plenty of forums out there on how to do that. Basically, I just add a couple gallons of vinegar to my fresh water tank, pump it through the system, let it sit for a while, flush it out, no big deal. Depending on the ratio of water to bleach you use, you can have it a more more harsh ratio which cleans faster or a less harsh ratio which cleans longer. So depending on the time we have, I use those recommendations and those can be found in your uh, Airstream manual. Somebody asked me about the different uh, types of vehicles I would recommend to pull the various types of Airstreams. And that is, that is way too complicated to really answer in a message here. I don't have a video explaining that, but I might make one in the future. Snap pads. Uh, I made a separate video about snap pads at long ago. It just recently posted somehow. I forgot to schedule it long ago. But the snap pads, I use them underneath the tires when we, I showed you those little snap pad blocks. And I have them on all the, the front nose jack and all four stabilizing jacks. Snap pads do a number of things. They give you a bigger footprint. They don't sink in the grass and gravel, the sand, depending on where you are, because you have a bigger foot. It doesn't damage the grass or ground when, you know, unlike the harsh kind of metal ones might sometimes. Uh, I don't have any, as we walk in a rig, it, it's not as much slippy because that metal thing on, on uh, asphalt or gravel sometimes would slide back and forth. And it's very little slippage, but, uh, so I don't have that. And it's a, it's a, uh, if I have a lightning strike, I don't have a place for that to go off to the ground. So it's kind of a um, insulator from, from electrical issues like that lightning strikes somebody commented that i could connect the mopicas to my serbo gx and i did that here's a video on that hey everyone i just want to say real quick how much i love the internet um uh, reading through comments on the a recent video i did on the mopica tank sensors and i had a comment from david on there thanks david for the information i did not realize that you could add those mopica bluetooth sensors to your serbo gx so if you have a system with a serbo gx installed uh, you can add those Bluetooth tank sensors to your screen. It takes a little bit of setting up because you got to convert some numbers to cubic centimeters and things like that, but pretty easy system to set up, and I have done it, and now I can see my gauge level on the Servo GX. And here's what my current thing looks like, and it's just part of the screen here. So what my rig is doing at the moment, broken down, and then tank levels. Uh, really cool. Now, I like the app. The app is pretty great, and it's always on my phone, but this is always here, so should I have a question? I have a notification right here. All right, for that's, for now, that's the main uh, comments and questions and feedback. So if I fail to answer something, again, leave comments down below or contact us via the Contact Us link on our website, and I will write you back or we'll set up a time to make a phone call and chat with each other about your questions and, your, and if you want to know my thoughts on anything, I'll gladly give them to you. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and happy adventures.